Ahoy friends, welcome to Building the Alpha Dory. I'm Dan and uh, this is a project to build a Chamberlain Marblehead Racing Dory um, from John Gardner's The Dory Book. Illustrations by Sam Manning. Uh, so this video we're going to finish cutting the gains in the uh, number one strikes and uh, yeah maybe even uh, get one of the strikes hung on the maybe get one of the planks hung on the boat so now let's get out into the shop and see how things go Much of the uh, gain I can do with the um, with the uh, <sighs> draw knife. Say it's uh, the ergonomics are a lot better when you're on the bench with this, but like I say, it is what it is. It's a little bit too, uh, <coughs> a little bit too long to uh, go on the bench. So. Thank you. 
pretty close. Just off the uh, just off the board, just out of the plank, but it's uh, I'm having to cut past it. And I think if I uh, this is, this board that was wedged up against here is keeping the bottom of this plank on the little shelf here that holds it up. If I get rid of that and clamp something to this like this, just a little thumb sticking up, I think it'll be less in my way, we'll see. And I think it'll do the same job. I might be able to still get the uh, might be able to get the might be able to get the uh, draw knife. Uh, curious though, I'd like to give it a try, even though I pretty much got the uh, bevel on cut, yeah, it's still gonna, still gonna get in the way. So the nice thing is uh, when you're up on the bench, you know, you, yeah, you've still got bracing off the ceiling to uh, to keep the plank from moving on you. So you can move the brace as you go by it. You know, just take that brace out, take that stick out, and, uh, and then you've got two or three other sticks on the plank anyway. All right, we're close enough to uh, go at it with the, um, to go at it with the plane anyhow. See if I can take some of that knot off. should do is do one bow bevel and then do the stern bevel on that same board then flip the board over and do the stern bevel and then do the bow, be bow bevel because I wouldn't have to keep bringing my varying my tools back and forth. Well, what I've learned when I build another one of these and 10, 12 years, maybe I'll remember that little, little time-saving thought that I just had. Maybe I won't that one soon. We'll see. Lord willing, the creeks don't rise.
Yeah. This is looking really good. I'm trying to tell if it's as good as it looks or if it's just that uh, I don't have the best light in here at the moment. It's uh, important to have good light to be able to see the see if you put any sort of round in the, uh, in the plank. It actually looks pretty good. So. You can see, uh, you can see what's left. Like I say, it's not a feather edge. You know, it's not a feather edge. It's not a knife edge. It's just a fine edge. A little bit less than an eighth of an inch. All right, onto the stern bevel. Just do this like you would the like you would the sticks on the bench. So I'll just move it and see if that lets me do the whole thing with the draw knife.
Alright. So that's where we're at with the gain there. That's ready to go on the boat. So, uh, yeah, the other thing I'd uh, like to do before I hang the plank is uh, paint these mating surfaces with, uh, with the old uh, cuprinol, cuprous oxide. So, got to do that before we can put the plank on. The other thing I'll have to do is check the, uh, check all the novels, make sure the transom bevel and the, uh, the bow bevel are good. Also, uh, soaking the end grain in this marine ply. This stuff's pretty rot resistant, but uh, it doesn't hurt to give it a little bit more. Marine fur. Uh, cuprous oxide is pretty good stuff. It seems to seems to work pretty well to uh, inhibit rot. I put it on a number of uh, spots on my own on boats that I've owned, and uh, yeah, I've seen it really work. Uh, stops, stops rot pretty much uh, straight away. If you see a spot that's that's uh, losing paint or staying wet longer than the rest of the wood, you can get it nice and dried out, and then just saturate it with this stuff. Three or four coats, you know, basically until it'll, it stops soaking in. And uh, you know, if you catch it in time when the wood is still in, while well, well, the wood's still in okay shape, you know, it'll usually kill the rot, and uh, you'll uh, you'll want to reapply, you know, especially if it's in a, if it's gonna keep getting wet, you know, go through wet dry cycles. But you know, it's good for a couple of years at least, and. Uh, yeah, you may not even have to deal with it again, depending on you know, how you're using uh, your boat or whatever, you know, whatever, wherever or whatever it is that you're saturating. I've also used this on uh, you know the sills of the house and just around the property. Not sills of the house, like you know, door sills and window sills. So I got a uh, pretty good response on that video about uh, seaworthiness that we put out earlier this week. I think it was yeah Monday maybe. And, uh, yeah, so I was just comparing two boats. You know, Centennial, which is a twenty-foot bank story, with the uh, Alpha Dory, which is a twenty-one foot. 
racing dory and uh, you know like I was saying the the weight is the big thing that that makes Centennial uh, seaworthy it's uh, or seaworthy air but um you know, as far as other boats go you know I, the uh, The Alpha is as good as just about anything out there. Um, you know, like I was saying, the uh, the limit of control, you know, where you can control the boat, like rowing it or sailing it against uh, against wind and wave. So the limit of control for sailing is going to be higher on the Alpha because it's a bigger boat. The limit of control is going to be a little bit lower on the Alpha because it's a bigger boat uh, if you're rowing it single-handed. Um, now, you know, if you got any other, say, 18 to 20 foot to 21 foot boat, you know, the Alpha may be significantly better than a number of, you know, like Centennial is 20 feet. It's smaller than the Alpha, but the Alpha is better because the Alpha is low, low to the water. And you know, a fairly compact boat, and uh, so it, the Alpha will be a lot better than something that's high sided. And the other thing is, you know, well, if it's not just you, if you've got two or three people aboard, you know, all of a sudden you can put put three people on the oars. You know, there's three three seats in this where you can really eff effectively row from, you know, she's got enough width at the gunnel to row, <clears throat> to row three people, in which case, you know, all of a sudden you just up your horsepower big time. So, uh, you know, if you've got crew aboard, then, you know, the Alpha just becomes more and more uh, seaworthy because you're, you're also able to use that crew weight to, uh, to carry more, to carry sail in heavier wind. It's interesting that the uh, the sail rig for the Alpha Dory uh, has no um, makes no uh, what's the word? It doesn't have a way to reef the sails. There's no reef points in an Alpha Dory sail. Um, which, you know, I didn't have reef points in my sail when I was sailing it. And, uh, if you have to, you can sail it under just the main, but that jib really, uh, actually contributes to the maneuverability of the boat, the seaworthiness of the boat. With just the main, it can be, uh, can be difficult to fall off the wind unless you have speed on. Whereas if you've got that little tiny jib up, the jib doesn't you know doesn't create a lot of uh, a lot of pull. If you get that little jib up, you can back the jib, and uh, even if you don't have movement of water over the rudder and the uh, center board, you can still fall off the wind. So it's pretty important to have that jib up, especially when you're maneuvering in close quarters. Uh, if you're in an anchorage or whatnot, trying to get off a beach or something, you want that jib up to maneuver the boat reliably. Um, the other thing is, is you can actually use that little jib to, uh, to heave too. Um, and you just sort of, uh, you know, if you want to get gear sorted or you want to take down the main, you can use that little jib to heave too, and the boat will just sort of uh, very calmly wait for you to do whatever needs doing and then you know, start either rowing or sailing again.
So here's the other number one straight. Hit this with some uh, some cooper and all as well. So I don't know if you uh, <clears throat> got a chance to take a look at any of the Small Reach Regatta videos that I put up. SRR it's called. That's what I label it as in most of the videos. Um, but yeah, I put up the Gosh, probably five or six SRR videos from uh, three weeks ago now at the final uh, small meeting of the Small Reach Regatta, which is um, oh, between 50 and 80 small boats that meet on the, uh, on the coast of Maine. Um, They've had a number of different locations. The original ones were at Wooden Boat Magazine, their camp, their uh, campground, and then uh, they moved on to, hmm, I believe it was Lemoyne State Park, and then uh, they did a couple of years at Hog Island, and then I believe went back to Lemoyne maybe, and. Uh, and in the last, oh, probably four or five years, they've been at, um, they've been in Brooklyn on the, on the reach, Agamogan, uh, at a place called, uh, Knowles Reach Camping, and they've been launching at, uh, they launched at Atlantic Boat, so, uh, yeah, I was happy to, uh, make it up to the, the last meeting, you know, said, uh, said, uh, ta, ta for now, you know, anyway, I'm sure I'll see these guys around, but said goodbye for now to a bunch of people who I would met up there over the years. And, uh, yeah, I had some great sales with the uh, previous Alpha Dory at the Small Reach, brought it up there, I think, three years. But this is, you know, a, a really an ideal boat for that event because it rows well and sails well and, uh, you know, carries a bunch of gear and people and, you know, whatever else you want to bring along for lunch at the beach or at whatever island we're headed to. But, um, yeah, pretty great boat all around, so... Looking forward to getting those uh, planks on her, get the rails on, and see her in the water. Hopefully by fall sometime, maybe even late summer, we'll see. See if how much I can crank on these planks. Thinking about maybe taking a, a day off from work, from work each week to uh, get a little bit more done on it. But we'll see. We shall see.
All right, well, I guess that's it for this evening. See ya. Thanks for stopping by building the Alpha Dory. If you've got any uh, comments or questions, feel free to leave them below and I'll uh, see if I can address any of them in the uh, upcoming video. Best regards and see you later.